My name is Joel and I'm a web designer here at PSP Inc. And today I'm going to show you how to optimize images for the web using Adobe Photoshop. So a couple terms up front that I wanted to um, define are lossy compression and lossless compression. Lossy compression um, basically takes uh, duplicated pixels, if you will, and uh, it takes it out of the image to reduce file size. Because we want images to load fast on your website, we need the file sizes to be a lot, like, pretty small. So with lossy compression, um, it takes out those those pixels. So in this picture, you'll see like black right there, and then the blue up here. <clears throat> the some of the pixels will get taken out to reduce the file size, but the quality will still be there. So with lossless compression, it's pretty much um, the opposite. No pixels are taken out. Um, it's it's higher in uh, file size, so. You don't really want to go go that method um, when you're choosing like a file and image format. So when you have your image in there, go to File, you go to Export, and then Export As. Photoshop makes it pretty easy to export images. So you have four that you can choose from. It's pretty much the only kind on on the web right now. Mine is some advanced stuff, but we're not going to go over that. So you'll have PNGs or PNGs, JPEGs, GIFs. SVG. Um, pings are cool. Um, they come in handy. They're not really good for, for websites. Um, they're lossless compression, so it's a much bigger file size. As you can see, this image is at 12 megabytes. That, that's quite a lot. It's a big image. You don't want 12 megabytes to be downloaded to the, to the user's um, device. So in fact, like one megabyte is getting a little too big. But then again, you don't really want to upload a 4K image. Um, anyways, so PNG, they kind of come in two flavors. You have PNG 8, which is a smaller fi file size, and PNG 24. So the differences are basically the color palette, because you know you have a color palette, um, and the pixels take each, each color, and that's what makes up the image. Um, with the 8, PNG 8, you just have a, a smaller color palette. Um, you don't really notice too much of a difference between um, 8 and 24 bit, but 24 um, bit will have more diverse um, color options for, for the algorithm to choose from. But it also means that the file size is going to be a lot bigger. So if you go with PNG and you can get away with um, a smaller color palette, go with the 8 bit. Um, but other than that, I, you know, I wouldn't really use the, the 24 bit. So another cool aspect of PNGs are the transparency factor. So those are good for logos. Um, if you have a logo and you have a white or a black or any colored background that you don't want with it, um, you just tick this transparency. Um, box and it'll basically remove the background. This isn't the best image for um, the show for that, but um, that's kind of what it's good for. So um, that's PNG. JPEG, it's what I use a lot. Um, I use it for like hero images, basically images that will span the entire width of the web page, um, those types of things. Things in like slideshow galleries um, for product sites like clothing sites or electronics stuff like that <clears throat> they're great they're um, lossy compression so they're smaller file size as you can see four megabytes is um, pretty pretty small compared to the PNG format JPEGs are probably the best best method to go for if you have like a full image um, you know, it, it compresses well, the, the quality maintains, and um, it's just kind of like, kind of the format you should probably go with um, when it comes to, when it comes to like bigger images on your site. So Photoshop, you can change the quality of the image, and that just, it's pretty much um, telling the the algorithm to, to compress it even further and even further make the file size even more but the lower you go percentage wise um, the lower the quality so with certain images you can tell that it looks pretty pixelated so I mean I would kinda keep it around 75-80% um, depending on the purpose 
Um, you don't really need to go 100% all the time. So I think 75 to 80% is pretty good, pretty good um, medium to go with. So those are JPEGs. With GIFs, kind of like the original um, format, this is what you could really choose from back when the web first started. GIFs are pretty good. Um, it's what I use a lot. They're, they're small fire file sizes. Um, the color palette isn't too big compared to PNG um, 8 or 24, but GIFs get the job done. Sometimes it's a bit noticeable when you have um, a full colored image like this one. You don't really want to like export it as a GIF because the quality just isn't really there. Um, I would use JPEG and as you can see JPEG um, is a lot a lot smaller file size wise compared to GIFs, but GIFs have their purpose. And it, it GIFs um, can have transparency, just like PNGs. Uh, they didn't offer it in this export box. Um, Photoshop, you can do a, use a legacy, legacy option under exports, like save for the web. And I used to use this a lot, but you can kind of see kind of see the difference in quality. So if you have a JPEG, you can see that it's a lot less um, pixelated compared to PNG or compared to um, compared to, to GIF. So um, I'm not sure why they chose to take out the transparency factor for GIFs, but if you need it, um, you can just use this legacy save for web feature that Photoshop has. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick with um, what they have now and their more modern versions of Photoshop. So um, yeah, that's GIF. Um, since the color palette isn't there with GIFs, you probably don't want transparency. I would I would kind of use PNGs uh, for that or even SVGs. Um, and SVGs is the next one that you can choose from. SVGs are called scalable vector graphics. Um, they're resolutionless. They don't they don't have pixels. Um, they don't have pixels, which is why this isn't displaying. <laughs> so um, SVGs are nice for illustrations. Uh, they're nice for geometric shapes. Uh, you know, you would typically kind of want to use um, another Adobe program called Illustrator if you want to create SVGs, but a lot of the newer versions of Photoshop allow you to import SVGs and export SV SVGs. So SVGs have come in handy and they're typically used for um, logos and like I said, illustrations. Um, and you don't, they don't get pixelated ever. So you could zoom in as much as you want and you're not gonna see a pixel. It's just gonna keep going in. So SVGs are pretty good. Um, the support is there for them in a lot of the browsers, except I believe it's IE10, IE10 and down. That doesn't really support it without some some hacks. And uh, but yeah, their SVGs are are pretty good, um, pretty good for logos and stuff. So, but I would say um, for most most images that are being on the web, JPEG is probably your best option. JPEG and GIFs. You know, that's what I would go for. Um, again, transparency is available in PNGs and GIFs. Um, so if you need transparency in your image, um, you can probably go with those. I, you know, I would probably use PNGs for logos personally, um, or SVGs. SVGs are nice. Um, like I said, they're resolutionless, so the file sizes are typically smaller and you can do a lot. You can do a lot with SVGs, animate and everything. So SVGs definitely have their place. But um, for general images, JPEG would be your best option. So these are just some of the, the formats you could choose from um, when optimizing images for the web in Adobe Photoshop. So hopefully it helped um, help you choose which format to go with. Thanks for watching.